This right here is the Acura Performance EV concept, and this is Rick Chen. He is the lead designer on this project, and he's going to take us for a tour of the vehicle. So, Rick, thanks so much for your time. First question, though, what is this vehicle? Well, this is the Acura Performance EV concept. We unveiled this vehicle at this year's uh, Montreal Car Week. So our goal for this project is to create excitement for what we're about to do, and uh, this represents the uh, first EV product that we will create in uh, Ohio at our EV hub. Um, so with this Acura Performance EV concept, we really want to send a message to our audience, to our customers, that Acura is making its first, um, first developed uh, EV concept mm -hmm. or, or, or EV product in the future. And uh, we are creating, uh, we have created a very unique uh, design styling language. Before we get mm -hmm. into some of the details, I do want to ask you, this is a preview of a production model, correct? Yes, yes, yes. How close is the concept to the real thing we can expect, what, late next year? Well, you can expect us to create a, uh, a EV uh, product that will be fully representing of the Acura Spirit, which is performance. So a lot of these elements will carry over, but perhaps they're a little bit exaggerated on the concept versus what will be the production version? Mm, in terms of exaggeration, um, we are m going for a more pure direction in terms of performance, mm -hmm. uh, even as we go into the uh, uh, electric vehicle realm. Yes. Gotcha. So starting up front then, we've got a pretty pronounced sort of nose on this vehicle. Yes. And that's something yes. we've seen on Acuras historically, yes. sort yes. of the yes. shield grill. Yes. Yes, so our, uh, our zero beak center brake, it's something that um, Acura has been known for uh, quite well. Um, it's to focus on precision and craftsmanship uh, DNA, um, but we're enhancing its performance aspect even more going forward. Um, as you can see on this vehicle, we want to really uh, create a lot of unique character on the front face that mm -hmm. suggests and expresses performance. Um, we, uh, while we no longer have the intake of an internal combustion engine car, mm -hmm. we did create very sculptural intake on both sides of the vehicle, on the lower front bumper, mm -hmm. and even on the hood, um, where our forms really translate through the vehicle from the front to the top and from the front to the side mm -hmm. um, as we're sculpting the vehicle um, all the way towards the rear end. And this really gives the car a sense of um, athleticism. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like an athlete that's breathing, that's running forward. Um, and in the process, we created a really beautiful surface mm -hmm. that makes a great contrast of uh, light and dark. Mm -hmm. So you can see a lot of 3D. Yeah. And, and, and There's it's a very lot of unique. surfacing here, too. This yes, is sort of yes, a, a, yes. a convex surface, I think so you when said. You, when, you, when you look at the car from far away, it's without a doubt a performance vehicle. But when you look at the car up close, mm -hmm. You also see very sophisticated and very interesting surface developments um, that otherwise you, you, you wouldn't find common on the road today. And we also highlighted a lot of unique details um, oh, yeah. in different views of the car. For example, this indication of kind of like digital pixel, but in the form of a uh, racing stripes. We put that on the hood. On the front, we repeated this kind of twin bar pattern mm -hmm everywhere on the ventilation areas, almost reminiscent of um, the heat sink of a computer. Okay. Where uh, we are trying to show, our design, design team is trying to show um, the high performance of an electronic device as well. Because obviously another luxury automaker is known for sort of a two-line design motif. Mm -hmm. Genesis, mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. you're implementing that completely differently here. Well, for and us- And it draws yes. inspiration you mentioned earlier, which I wouldn't have yes. thought of. With the caliper. From yes. the caliper, so yes. you're tying yes. that into yes. the logo quite yes. nicely. Because it is, it is along the center line and, yeah. and where we have our zero B brake uh, as part of our DNA in the past, uh, I want to emphasize that uh, in a digital way. It's, it's precision going forward into digital, into electronic world, but also um, it's about performance, hence the racing stripes, but it's also uh, functional design because like it's for cooling. So EV, just like petrol cars, they also need to be cooled. And we want to embed these detailed design, uh, iconic design details into the DNA of the styling. So we may carry forward uh, product uh, after products. And is that a theme we will see on future production Acuras then? Mm, I think you'll just are. have to wait. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, I'm not getting anything out of him today. But let, let's, let's move along the side then, because okay. there's 
the, the back end of, my, of this yeah. concept is my favorite angle. I think it's absolutely beautiful, and we're working our way back there. But a lot going on with the side as well. Yes, Walk yes, exactly. Through a little bit. Yes, so um, if we look at the side view, side body design of the car, um, we chose a two-tone. Um, so which means the cabin is uh, in gloss black and it's actually graphically design wise integrated in with the hood. So it forms this very um, speedboat yacht kind of look, it looks more luxurious, looks more sleek, looks more elegant. Um, but visually what that does for us is when we make a battery electric vehicle, we have a lot of more height mm -hmm. mass to deal with. That um, battery pack is a as, you know, as, as stylus. Inches. Yeah, so so here's where um, uh, as car designer we're challenged to reduce that thickness to still give it a very aesthetic and performance oriented appearance. So we used also two tone on the lower body and actually these triangular motif on the lower body and the upper body uh, creates these points that kind of pinches the waist that gives it a more athletic uh, 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 image. Mm -hmm. And it really emphasizes what we're about to see in the rear, which is a very muscular and simple and sophisticated but powerful rear fender. Mm -hmm. While we're at the profile here, mm -hmm. short overhangs, long wheelbase, yes. which you've got a new architecture, Honda's mm -hmm. first in-house platform. That's right. So you That's can right. set those parameters up now and mm -hmm. then work from those. Mm -hmm. um, but 23 inch wheels, mm -hmm. those are huge. Are we going to see those on a production model? Well, and the same question for yes. matte paint, because yes. there are some you know, maintenance issues yes. potentially. So the message we want to send is definitely we are about performance, right? But we want to provide you performance with confidence. Mm -hmm. We want to feel you to feel comfortable and stable when you're driving this car at high speed, right? Um, and what I want to talk to you about is our design for the wheel. So we really want to give it more human character on the sculptural design of the wheel as well, just like we did with the car's body. Um, so here, um, our designer was inspired by musical instruments. So for example, the uh, violin strings, uh -huh. which is thin, strong, and very light, um, which we're hoping with uh, what our BEF uh, products in the future will do is, is that they're more about weight efficiency, mm -hmm. uh, but still uh, you're getting high performance. And um, we purposely spaced them um, more randomly. Yeah, they're not an evenly spaced like yeah, you might expect. Yeah, yeah. So here we're trying to avoid it being overly rational. Okay. We're trying to create more emotion, um, just a lot more sculpture, a lot more personality. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we didn't want a very dry or static uh, electronic look like appliance. We, we want more, more individuality and more expressiveness into the overall design. And um, this is really one of my favorite uh, detail on mm. the car. Yeah, very nice. I, I may not want to clean any brake dust out of those mm. little <laughs> grooves, but it is a, a, an arresting <laughs> design. While we're right here at the driver's side front fender, is that the charging port door is going yes, to be right this, there. Yes, this is, yes, and yes. Obviously this is just a concept, so you're not exactly mm, going to be driving mm. out to the EA station to DC fast charge, but mm. do you guys have any preference of where you put the charging port? Is that an engineering question? Is there a best practices that you guys have for locating the charging yeah. port? So this really is where we want to provide the best solution for mm -hmm. our customer um, and to I couldn't really answer your question in a really specific way, but I think it really depends on the market mm -hmm. because in certain markets, uh, the, the, the layout of the road, the layout of the charging location, the way people park mm -hmm. are a little bit different. Uh, some, some countries, some region in the world, people are closer to their neighbors when they're parked, some are not, some are parked with the rear end, some are parked with the, mm -hmm. the front end. So it really depends on the market. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we will be able to provide the best solution for our customer going forward. Yeah. Because for me personally, the front fender mm -hmm. is a very good spot just from mm -hmm. my experience mm -hmm. here in North America. Mm -hmm. And I really like it in the grill. Mm -hmm. I know there might be mm -hmm. some issues in, in mm -hmm. wintertime with snow mm -hmm. and ice, but mm -hmm. up front, it's just super easy to pull into the spot mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. plug in. You don't have to think about it. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's with that is there's no single solution that's best for every situation. So it really has to depend on um, which region uh, our customer is at. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure we will 
provide them with the best products going forward. I, I look forward to it. But moving rearward, so we've got a fairly angular front end. We've got that cut line in the door with another mm -hmm. vent. Mm -hmm. But then it gets a lot smoother and more organic yes, yes, as we yes. shift to the back. Yes. Walk me through sort of the logic of that. Okay. The front end and the rear end are a little bit different. Yes. So in the very early phase of the project, um, my philosophy for our team was we want to end up with the very simple and modern and clean design, finally. Um, as we're looking at today. So from this view especially, this is one of my favorite view. Um, you have these very simple, smooth, mm -hmm. super smooth, um, and elegant yet powerful rear fenders that really can tell this car is about performance. You can go anywhere, right? You can, you can drive really fast in this <laughs> car, right? It's like a big cat almost is ready to jump. That's right, that's right, that's right. And as the form and the volume goes forward to the face of the car where we just came from, mm -hmm. you will find more angles, more triangles, mm -hmm. right? More, more sharper lines, more aggressive character. And that's really allowing us as viewers to see this car with a clear direction. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, if you were to look at this vehicle from the plan view from the top, mm -hmm. you'll see the cabin basically is a teardrop. It's a teardrop from the side view. It's also a teardrop in the plan view. Mm. And that's done with clear intention of providing the best function of uh, aerodynamic. Right. It's pretty important so, with EVs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> especially with EVs, because yeah. we want to allow our battery to be able to reach its highest performance, again, performance. And that way, there will be more battery power for the interior's digital experience mm -hmm. for our user. So this is really important that we really enhance the performance of the aerodynamic on the exterior, but in the same time, making it look beautiful, mm -hmm. which is the challenge that our design team face throughout Always, the project. Right? Yes. And I will tell you, when I saw photos of this vehicle, mm -hmm. they didn't do it justice. I didn't mm -hmm. know what to mm -hmm. expect. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of didn't think it looked all that great in mm -hmm. pictures, mm -hmm. but seeing mm -hmm. it in person, that's always mm -hmm. what you have to do under more yes. natural lighting. Yes. Yes. See it in the flesh. Yes, yes. And there's a lot of beauty here. Yes, I think almost all performance-looking car, um, performance car, you have to see it in person. Yeah. And that's where you really fall in love with the design. It's because you get to see it in person, and you also get to touch it, to feel the volume. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think um, our team uh, was very successful in uh, making a really attractive design. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's talk about the rear. Please. Yeah. So once again, the rear view and the rear, rear quarter view are, are my favorite view of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, the Good rear choice. is even more simple. So, um, and you know how much we're in traffic these days, you know, in this, especially in city driving. So the rear, I want it to be very simple. Uh, very pleasant to look at and also memorable. So pleasant doesn't mean it's boring, but it's so simple, like you couldn't really take any more elements out of it to make it more simple. No, you'd be missing a tail light then, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, here on the end of the cabin, um, as it sits on the deck, I chose a very circular design so that your eye basically is wrapped from one side of the car to the other side. Um, there's no interruptions, right? nowhere is it unsmooth. Mm -hmm. um, that gets your attention lower into the vehicle uh, on the rear. Then you see the iconic tail light, which is very simple. It's a one connected blade, right? That goes from one corner to the other corner. So it really communicates how wide the vehicle is. Mm -hmm. It's got a very wide yet stable stance. And you can see our Acura letter spelled out in the back, just like some of our earlier Acuras in the early 90s, which I always like. Yeah. Um, and the bottom uh, towards the trunk is it's tucked in a little bit. It's very sophisticated to you know to 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 match and complement the body side as well. And so we have a very stable line that wraps around the bottom. Yeah, that kind of includes everything on the bottom together. So it's a nice and neat. Um, you got the two lines in the bumper yes, as well. Yes, yes, reminiscent the of yeah. the detail on the front. But this is our brake light in the back. Huh. Um, we even have that pattern repeated, twin mm. bar pattern repeated uh -huh. on the bottom in the skit, which is also looking a little bit like a diffuser. Oh, yeah. So we want that performance look. So it's not a center high mounted stoplight in this right, case, it's right. a low mounted stoplight right, right, right. on this obviously concept vehicle. Yes. And if we come right from this angle though, you can really get a sense of how wide those rear fenders are and how you oh, sort yes. of pull the body the roof line inward. Yes, and it's quite and, dramatic. And 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 that's the that's the plus of creating a very aero um, upper cabin is that you leave plenty more room. So by subtracting, mm -hmm. you're actually adding 
without adding, mm -hmm. right? Because we don't want to just add for adding sick, then, then your car gets bigger and then you need even bigger wheels. But, but here on the top, we're subtracting and then we're leaving out more space on the bottom to show that width, mm -hmm. which is good for the styling of this car. Absolutely. When you're designing something like this, what are your inspirations? What do you draw from? Because I'm um, not a car designer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't draw anything. Mm -hmm, <laughs> so mm -hmm. what, what, what inspires you when you go to create a vehicle like this? Oh, my inspiration comes almost everywhere. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of airplanes. Okay. Um, so I like their very functional and elegant nature. Um, I'm also a big fan of uh, earlier Formula One vehicles, especially Senna's. Uh, in the in the late 80s and early mm -hmm. 90s. So I look for a lot of purity and simplicity in design. Uh, for me, less is more and less is not boring. Mm -hmm. It's what you are doing with the elements that you have and you really need to enhance them and really celebrate their, their natural character and just put them in the best opportunity to, to look beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they can be. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in, you know, uh, one type of form is more beautiful than the other type of form. I think it's how you use them. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you actually doing with the ingredients? So, mm -hmm. um, I kind of like the simple things, you can say. Um, I also like uh, very sculptural. Mm -hmm. uh, I like sculpture, uh -huh. uh, just pure and simple. Um, one of my biggest inspirations is Carla Trava as an architect. I like Picasso. I, I draw love, inspiration from a whole yes, bunch of manufacturers. Many different things. Products many and, different and things. Artists yeah. and, and I like mechanical yeah. mechanical products. Mm -hmm. um, I like to take them apart. So in some of the more intricate patterns, you can see my love for, for detail things. Mm -hmm. um, but I like story building. I want to connect the details together so that they form a really interesting story. Mm -hmm. um, because I think you know a good product um, also deserves a really nice story. A really, really interesting origin mm -hmm. of, of how it's designed, how it's thought of, what's its purpose, uh, both in functional terms and also in aesthetical terms. It's sort of my little way of philosophy. Now, you mentioned uh, sculptural forms a moment ago, and we see a lot of that here in the rear fender. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that difficult to get into a production vehicle? Because you can design something. Yeah. But the whole other side of the coin is manufacturing. You can't, yes. It's no good if you can't yes. build it. Yes. I think, I think our, you know, we have really good engineers. We, our engineers can build just about anything. I mean, we, 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 we make jets, right? I mean, uh -huh. we, we, we used to make robots. So yeah. um, Honda's a very, very, very unique company, very innovative company. I think where the real challenge comes from is cost. Right, so, so yep. how many are you making at what price mm -hmm. and uh, what's the price you're gonna be selling at? So our continuing challenge would be to make the BEV vehicle that we'd be pursue, producing in Ohio uh, uh, to be more, to be more uh, uh, um, let's say, uh, um, to have more wider audience to mm -hmm. be able to enjoy our product. That's, that's our challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. As a designer, what keeps you up at night? When you're, when oh. you're trying to, to, to create the next big thing. <laughs> Sometimes, hopefully, not too many things. Um, I think what keeps me up at night is always the next car that I want to design. Yeah. That I'm constantly thinking about, oh, what should I do next? Like, what's the best idea going forward? Um, that's, that's, that's the next thing. It's, 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 it's that search for newness, I mm -hmm. want to say. Um, because I, want, I do want to do something that I haven't done before. I think that's what keeps me up at night. You've got to keep innovating and yes, pushing yes. forward, you got to keep, resting on your laurels. Keep challenging yourself, um, um, keep challenging yourself. And I just like new things. Um, I want to do and, and, and I want to you know, bring my team along that journey to pursue and achieve something that uh, very few people have, have done before. And um, with that, sometimes you might fail. So you really need to sometimes have some guts to be brave. Uh -huh. um, but I think good, good, good designers are more brave that they're able to take those risks, take those, risks, forward, take yeah. those challenge. Um, because for me, it's not really hard. It's more fun and it's more challenging. I see. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Rick, thank you so much for the tour of the okay. Acura Performance EV concept yeah. here. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see the production model. And the good news is we don't have to wait too long yes. because what late yes. next year it should be coming out. So. Yes. Thank you Appreciate very much. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. 
Next up, for an Acura EV you can buy today, check out my first drive review of the ZDX Crossover. This vehicle offers a lot of great features and it is eligible for the full $7,500 tax credit. To learn more, click right over here to check out that video right now.